Not feeling super creative and need some help designing your game? Want to add some flair to an already published adventure? Do you need some DM inspiration in the middle of your game? I found a great resource for you. Let's go check it out. Today, I wanted to share with you the Game Master's Fantasy Toolkit from Roll and Play Press, an independent publisher out of London, UK. Roll and Play Press was nice enough to send me one of their previous Kickstarters that now can be purchased on their website. Full disclaimer, this is not a sponsored video. I did not receive any compensation for this review. So after looking over their Game Master's Fantasy Toolkit, there's a lot of things that I love about this book and I'm gonna share them with you now. So this is a little bit smaller than an eight and a half by 11. It's the A5 size. It's also a spiral bound book, which I thought is really great because you can completely flip it inside out and you only are taking up this small amount of space behind your Dungeon Master screen if you're going to use this at the table. Now this book features over 120 random tables that you can use before your game while you're planning things out or during your game on the fly. I don't know about you, but I personally love random tables to spice up my adventure and really add some interest. The folks at Roll and Play Press have really come up with some creative responses on these tables in here that I think are really gonna enhance my game. Let me share with you some of the tables that are inside. Now the table of contents lists five different types of chapters. We have people and quests, world building, journeys and events, combat and injuries, and items and rewards. So for people and quests, these are some of the different kinds of tables you're going to find in this book. First we have character names, and they have these divided into different tables like common names, magical names, names of outlaws, comedic names, heartthrob names, and even heroic names. And they're all on a D20 table, so you could just pick one you like off of the table, or you can roll a D20 and make it totally random. I love some of these names. The outlaw ones are great. Zed, Cassidy, Dante. How about common names? Elliot, Fergus, Sammy. Now here's a couple tables for character details. You know when those players start asking questions about your NPC that you hadn't really thought of and you're kind of put on the spot? Well, now you've got some tables here, which you can use to pre-plan or just use on the fly. We've got a table for behavior and traits with things like, this person often hums and sings quietly to themselves, or they're very intelligent, but they regularly finish other people's sentences. Or how about some appearance features like, they wear glasses with multiple zoomable lenses, or even their nose has clearly been broken a few times. There are tables for character motives, whether they're an adventurer or a villain, and even tables for character jobs in here. How many of you have your players suddenly ask an NPC what they do for work? Well, here's a table, a common villager, maybe they are part of a construction team. Maybe they're a strawberry picker. Maybe they work for the local blacksmith. There's also tables for well-paid professions and even weapon wielding careers. Maybe your NPC works for an organization. Plenty of tables for that too. Maybe they work for a mining corporation called the Stone Diggers or a thieves society called the Shadow Kinship. We've got tables for how the party first met campaign ideas, and then we even get into a whole chapter full of world building tables. In the book, they state that this chapter is gonna add fascinating features and attractions to your town. Check this out. Here's a town features section where you have town characteristics, town economies, town government and leadership tables, local attractions. There's even a table for the town crier news. There's a table for rumors and gossip, and one of my personal favorites, a table for the bounty posters. Roll some D10s and a D8 and come up with the silver specter who walks with a bronze cane is wanted for selling counterfeit potions on the black market. 
There's tables for the different types of markets and shops in your town, shop descriptions, even different food and beverage options they would find in town. And how about coming up with tavern and inn names on the fly when your characters ask about those? Yeah, let's go down to the local watering hole. What's it called? Either a quick look at the table or a quick roll, and they might be headed to the wonky hippogriff. Here's a couple of my favorites for the world building. You've got a table of wonderful festivals that could happen in your town. And my absolute favorite, the parlor games. Maybe everybody wants to head down to the local tavern and just play some parlor games with some of the locals. There are instructions here for what if you wanted to have a chess tournament? We'll have two players roll dice to test their intelligence and the first one to roll over 20 three times wins the chess tournament. Or what if you wanted to have an arm wrestling competition? Two characters roll competing dice in a test of strength and the best out of three wins. On to journeys and events. This section is great too. You've got many pages of different types of encounters which are really interesting. We've got frozen encounters, forest encounters, desert, deep sea, meadow encounters, urban encounters, mountain, swamp, cave, coastal encounters, and even magical encounters and corrupted encounters. Heading into something like monsters, we've got tables for how monsters can be recognized, what a monster's motive is, and even tips to their personality. Another thing that can make your game really interesting is having your players have strange dreams at night while they're long resting. There's even some tables in here for sweet dreams and ghastly nightmares. That includes visions and hallucinations that I think can really add some great interest to your game. They've got tables for traps and hazards, dangerous doors, and we're going to get into combat and injuries. Now the combat and injuries section is really interesting because you can add a lot of creative flair to what happens on a critical hit or a critical failure. Check some of these out. Here's a spread of tables for melee hits. Critical hits on one side, critical misses on the other. Some of these are really interesting. So a few of the critical misses, say they roll a natural one, your weapon is damaged and it will need repairing, or you immediately trip and fall prone on the floor, or you feel lightheaded and exhausted until you take a rest, or ow, my arm, your melee attacks only do half damage on your next turn. Next, a spread of ranged weapon attacks. Again, critical hits and critical misses. We also have critical hits and misses for magical attacks. Ooh, and even lasting injuries and revival side effects. These are really interesting. What if you took a really, really bad injury? Uh, you lose a toe. Roll 1d10 to find out which one. There are so many tables in this book. They weren't kidding when they said over 120 random tables. Now we have illnesses and ailments, deadly diseases, divine blessings, and malevolent curse tables. Here's the last section of the book, items and rewards. Everyone loves finding that great loot, right? This is so handy for coming up with some really creative ideas for loot rather than just the standard of what's in the Dungeons and Dragons books. You've got enchanted weapons, spellbound armor, magical things, enchanted items. I personally like this one, single use magic items. Instead of letting the characters find something that they can don and use forever, how about something that has a one-time use and then it vanishes? We have things, I love this one, a blue leather bound book that when the user signs their name, it swaps their strength and intelligence scores for one day. Here's another one of my favorites, potion appearances. You might find a potion and the characters might be like, well, what does it look like is in the bottle if they can't identify it? There's some really great descriptions in here. A fluorescent blue liquid that seems to be electrically charged a deep brown bubbling liquid with chunks of wood at the bottom. These are definitely things that I wouldn't have probably thought of on my own. 
Another one of my favorites is this table in here for bargain spell scrolls. Maybe they thought that dealer was giving them a really good deal on really cheap spell scrolls, but it turned out that they've got a little twist to them. They thought they were buying a bestow curse spell scroll, but it was actually a bestow purse spell scroll. Your coin purse is magically placed into your target's pocket, unlocked and open. I also love this books and novels spread. For some reason, whenever you come across a library or find some books, players always want to know what the titles of those books are, even if there's nothing special about them and they're not important to the game. So you have tables for fictional titles, historical essays, magical tomes, and cursed manuscripts, and even a table for interesting descriptions of what the book looks like. Again, there's so much inspiration in this book. I'm really thankful to Roll and Play Press for sending it to me. I really appreciate it, and I'm definitely going to be using it in my next game. Adventurers, if you enjoyed this video, can you go ahead and just smash that like button? Give us a thumbs up. It helps support the channel more than you know. Now, Roll and Play Press currently has another Kickstarter going on right now. There's only about four days left on it. And while this was a Game Master's fantasy toolkit, the one that's up right now is a fantasy character kit for helping build players build characters with a little more creativity and flair. I'll put the link to that Kickstarter in the description down below. Now here's the epic question of the day for everyone. Do you like to use tables and books of random tables in your games as a player or as a dungeon master? Or do you like just coming up with stuff on your own on the fly? I can do a little bit of both, but sometimes those creative juices just aren't flowing for me. And I really want some kind of table where I can come up with some stuff with a quick roll. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Adventures, I've got all sorts of epic videos planned coming up ahead. So you're going to want to make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of these epic upcoming videos. Now make sure you go and have an epic adventure.